So hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what white noise is in time series and why it's so important to understand it. Now, the reason it's so important is that if you're doing any time series modeling project and you want to make predictions in the future, the moment you realize, the moment you recognize that a particular time series is white noise, that is where you abandon the project because it is impossible to forecast values for that series in the future. I'm going to be discussing what the characteristics of white noise are and I'm, we're going to be discussing uh, some plots that I've shown you over here and how to correctly identify them as well. So white noise essentially has three characteristics. The first one being constant mean and the second one being constant variance. So the first two are pretty self-explanatory, right? The third characteristics, which is one of the most important in any white noise is that there is no autocorrelation. What does that mean? That means the value of the time series at a particular period has no relation with the values in the past time period. And the moment you understand this, you realize why it's impossible to make predictions for a white noise because there is no pattern in your time series data. If there is no pattern, if there is no relation of past and present values, then there is no way that you can make predictions in the future, right? Because it's completely random. So these three characteristics make up a white noise. Now let me show you three plots and we can identify which one is a white noise by visual inspection. The first plot that I've uh, shown you is that of a white noise. You can see the mean is somewhat constant around zero and there are variations. However, the variations are more or less similar with the time. However, there is no autocorrelation that you can visibly identify at least. You cannot say that if you know the particular value at a particular time period, you can estimate the next values. There is no pattern you can see. Right, that is why we say there's no autocorrelation, it's impossible to make a prediction. The second plot that I've shown you over here, first of all, it does not have a constant mean, so you can automatically disqualify it. However, you can also see that there is a clear autocorrelation. You can see the repeating peaks. So for this time series, you can make a prediction for the future. If you know that a particular value is at a peak, you can successfully estimate that in the next time period, there is also going to be a rise or a peak. Right, so there is some autocorrelation in this time series. The third time series that I'm showing you over here, it also seems to have somewhat constant mean, but clearly there is autocorrelation. There are repeating peaks over here, which means that if you know the value at a particular time step, you can somewhat estimate what the values are gonna be in the next time period. There is certain visible patterns. So that's how you can visually identify, but sometimes it not, might be possible to just do it by visual inspection. So the methods that you use to, so the methods that you use for identification are broadly this, right? First is visual inspection like we just did. Second is global and local checks. The first two criteria was constant mean and constant variance, right? So you can take the mean of the whole sample and then which is called the global check. And then you can do local checks, meaning for particular uh, periods in the time series. And if the mean does not seem to be constant or the variance does not seem to be constant, you can again disqualify that. Again, another method is autocorrelation plots because a white noise, there should be no autocorrelation. And autocorrelation plots will basically show you how the current values are related with the past values. So if there's a high autocorrelation in any of your plot, that is not a white noise. Last is some statistical tests as well, which I'm not going to discuss now, but there do exist some tests which will basically take a null hypothesis, which claims that your series is a white noise and an alternate hypothesis, which claims that the series is not a white noise. And based on that, there are some tests as well, but more often than not, the first three methods itself would be sufficient to classify a series as white noise or not a white noise. That is all you need to know about this and that is why it's fundamentally important before starting a project if it's a white noise abandon that if not that is how you know that you can actually make predictions for the future so that was all for this video if you did like it do like this video and subscribe to this channel and see you in the next video